Funding for FAIR 2024 is provided by... Quickstar is proud to be a part of Iowa communities across the state. Family owned for over 50 years, we're dedicated to treating our guests, employees, and communities as we would like to be treated. Across Iowa, hundreds of neighborhood banks strive to serve their communities, provide jobs, and help local businesses. Iowa banks are proud to back the life you build. Learn more at iowabankers.com. For Iowa pig farmers, caring for animals is more than a job. It's a way of life and a proud family tradition. Meet the people behind the pork and hear how we care about Iowa too. Learn more at iowapork.org slash we care. Iowa State University Extension and Outreach, providing educational resources online and in your county for you, your family, community, business, or farm. Welcome to our coverage of FAIR 2024. I'm Paul Yeager, in for Bill Riley, and we're swinging into the final moments of FAIR 2024, but there's still so much more to see, and we've got another full hour of highlights ready to roll. We'll see some State FAIR fans come together for a few exhilarating rounds of bingo. Some young buckaroos will learn the ropes. And we'll find out which of these 4-H and FFA animals are the GOAT. Up first, Travis Graven brings us a high-flying performance that's as thrilling as it is terrifying to watch. The Flying Fools. The Flying Fools are getting limbered up and ready for the show. The crowd is patiently waiting and getting very excited. And I'm getting my neck all limbered up because, boy, you have to look way, way up to the top of this tower to see what's yet to come in this high-flying show here at the Iowa State Fair. minute family friendly show it's action packed from start to finish you're gonna get to see us do olympic style diving uh, trampoline style moves on a diving board all of us will even jump at the same time we crisscross it's just complete chaos and at one point we take a turn and the comedy bit comes out and we turn into a bunch of clowns A lot of us were high school divers and a bunch of us dove in university as well. We have gymnasts who come with us as well. A lot of aerial skiers too are surprisingly very good at flipping and twisting, who would have guessed? Uh, so we have all different walks of life that come and find their way into our pool. It's exhilarating. You look down and you can see the entire fair and there are so many people watching from, from the bleachers in front of us to the back stands and you, you get to take a look at the view and look at the whole city of Des Moines around us and it's exhilarating. The grand finale at the end of the show is an 80 foot high dive, 80 feet into just 10 feet of water. And every time you're gonna get to see somebody doing different flips, different twists on the way down. It is exhilarating for the audience and for us. Well, let's help him out. Tell him go higher, higher. There are four guys, all of the guys on our team do the high dive. So every show, if you come, will be, you'll get to see a different high diver climbing to the top. And we change positions and we try to mix it up and do different dives and tricks so that our repeat customers who do come more than once, they can try and pick out the little nitty gritty changes and different flips and twists that we do. Well, and it keeps it fun for us too. When we get to express our 
talents and range of skills, it's fun for us to try new things and, like I said, push our limits a little bit. Oh, the crowds here have been unbelievable. We've had so many good responses from everybody and it's so exhilarating for us to try harder and try newer, harder tricks because the people here we can tell really appreciate. Uh, what we're doing up there. Our shows are at 11, 2, and 5 every day. We're right beside the craft beer tent. Come see the show. You won't be disappointed. We'll keep you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. Today's a fun day. We love bingo at the Iowa State Fair. Come on in. It's going to be our biggest one yet. Yes. And uh, we host bingo. The Blue Ribbon Foundation hosts bingo on the Grand Concourse, where we are right now. And bingo is it's $1 a play. And we're raising money today for the Blue Ribbon Foundation for our improvements on the grounds. Half of that dollar goes to the winner of the game of bingo and half the dollar goes to renovations of the Iowa State Fair. Come in and join us. We have volunteers who run the entire operation. Uh, they do a great job. We get celebrity callers who come in and uh, call the bingo game. My middle son, Ralph County, is playing bingo right now, nine years old. And we just, we get people who stop in walking down Grand Avenue to play bingo and they're having fun and they're also supporting the Blue Ribbon Foundation. I-17. It's fun to watch the people, especially the little kids when they're playing their first game of bingo, and just the excitement. Everybody loves to win. I-21. I-21. The winner always jumps up and uh, says bingo, and they get very excited, and then uh, everyone else is ready to win the next one. It's great fun. I-18, we got a bingo right here in the front. Congratulations. Blue Ribbon Foundation receives half of proceeds from the game. The winner of the game receives the other. It's a win-win for everyone. Oh, I love bingo. <laughs> I'd play all the time if I could. I've played every year since they started, and this is the first time I've won. <laughs> Today I won $21. Well, I got my money back. <laughs> we started this in 2018 and we've raised nearly $14,000 off of bingo uh, for the Blue Ribbon Foundation. We've been around about 31 years, and one of the reasons that we came into inception was the Des Moines Register took us to task that the Iowa State Fair is supposed to be a great celebration of Iowa, of all things Iowa, and our roofs were leaking and our sidewalks were, were cracked, and this had become an embarrassment. And that really helped spur the start of the Blue Ribbon Foundation because this is supposed to be a great celebration of Iowa, and Blue Ribbon Foundation has been responsible for all these improvements that we are all so proud of now for Iowans to be able to make memories and uh, share experiences with their friends and family. Our mission will always be relevant because there's, we want to maintain the traditions we have and we want to grow for the future uh, to attract fairgoers, and so fairgoers can always do what they like to do at the fair but then add new things for them to experience as well. We are so proud and so thankful for the generosity of Iowans because they have made this Iowa State Fair what it is. Hey partner, there's something new around these parts and it's called Cowboy Boot Camp. And they're here to teach you everything you need to know about being a cowboy. Let's take a gander. Cowboy Boot Camp is 10 stations hands-on where they interact as plain cowboy and cowgirl. We have the gold panning station, which the kids can actually find a piece of gold and we turn it into the craft station and receive a free lollipop. And we have our dress like a cowboy or a cowgirl. We have Saddle the Pony. And 
then we have our corn box, which has been very successful here at the Iowa State Fair. We have rope the steer. And they get to be a cowboy or cowgirl and rope that steer. Tell me what you're doing here today. Um, I'm just fishing, and um, this is how you catch fish. You have to get bait and a fishing line, and you have to try to get fish. And when they bite on, you have to pull it up and throw it in or keep it to eat. So tell me, what do you like better, a corn box or a sand box? Like, the sand, they're like so small and they can annoy you. Yeah. But corn, you can like see where they are. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your campfire? Yes. We are at a campsite. You're at a campsite? And tell us your favorite thing about being a cowgirl. Going on the hook. Ride. Going on the horsey ride? Very cool. It's been an amazing experience at the Iowa State Fair. We're so excited to be here. We come all the way from Texas. And I have to say, this fairgrounds is one of the top fairgrounds. I've been all over the country, and it's just absolutely beautiful. And we're happy to have Cowboy Boot Camp here at the Iowa State Fair. My kids all love horses, so this is super fun. They like to play in the corn, they're practicing fishing, they've been doing the lasso, so, and they really liked this when they were riding the stick horses around, so they're having all the fun. Iowa's fair-going population has been more urban than rural for quite some time. That's why the Central Iowa Tractor Club brings out their iron horses to help us better understand our agricultural roots. Drawn to antique tractors, you have to have a liking for the tractors. Some of these tractors, uh, I've got three at home that you actually have to spin a flywheel, you know, the old John Deere's. But when that thing fires off, you know, it's like, I did that. And there's a way to do that, and it's not something you'd, you'd have to learn. This year we have 50 units. It goes back to the love of the tractor. Most, I would say most of these guys were born and raised on a farm. This is our 33rd year at the State Fair. We first came here in 1991. The State Fair people always say, you're the easiest display on Grand Avenue because we're here at five o'clock in the morning. We're set up, ready to go at seven. Also, at noon today, we always start the tractors up because a lot of people like to hear the putt-putt. My new tractors, old style, two-cylinder tractors. In the last 20 years, I've probably restored about a 70 tractor. And this one right here is the last one I did. It's not mine, I sold all mine. I brought tractors up here for, I'd say, close to 32 years. A couple of years, I brought 12 tractors. Then at night, we start breaking down at 4.30, but when we parade out, both sides are full. And so it gained popularity.
are in the livestock arena again. It's time for the 4-H and FFA Goat Show. We'll start with 4-H, we'll meet a couple of competitors, and then be in the ring for the final drive for FFA. I'm Clay Couture, I'm from Baxter, Iowa, and I just won the Division I Market Doe Division at the Iowa State Fair. It just means everything to me, because this has been my dream all year long, and it's just been an honor to win it. Which is harder, inside the ring or outside of the ring? Outside. Why? Because inside the ring, I know what I'm doing. Out, outside of the ring, I'm struggling to just make sure that I don't mess up in the ring and everything's in my head. My name is Bristol Brunton. I'm from Iowa County, and I show the Champion Division One Market Go at the Iowa State Fair. What's it like showing in the ring at the State Fair? Uh, it's very exciting. Like when you win, you know, it's just you know, exciting. What makes a good animal? This kind of stout, big back, good leg hair. What makes a good shower? I say for showmanship, good eye contact, good posture. Do you get nervous in the ring? Yeah. Is it more stressful out here getting ready or in the ring? I think both parts are kind of stressful. Just getting up to the ring, but also being in the ring, knowing where to go at the right time. I'm Avery Shalla. I'm 19 years old and I'm from the Lone Tree FFA and I just won Grand Champion FFA Market Weather. What's that mean to win? It means a lot to me. I mean, it means that all my hard work throughout the summer really paid off, and it just means a lot for me and my animal to get to share a special moment. It's a family affair. Everybody yeah. helps. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about your family support. Um, I, my family supports me so much. I've always had a passion for showing, and we started out with cattle, and I always wanted to show goats, and Dad supported that. And we just all work together as a team and a family, and all of us siblings help us help each other out a lot. And you, this is not your first grand champion. Am, am I right on that? No, I won the steer show and then won the 4-H show with the weather last year, too. I've had some very good luck. But last year, your brother wins. Um, he, he cited you as, yeah. as someone he looked up to. What's that mean? It, it really does mean a lot to me because I've always had a passion for showing and seeing my brother is interested in having work so hard and it pay off means a lot to me. That final drive, mm -hmm. when the judge is walking, are you hoping the judge is looking at you or looking yeah, away from you? Your heart's just racing like 100 miles per hour and all you want is to see the judge come your way and pick your animal. That's just your goal. So it's just like so many emotions at once and you're just so thankful to be able to have this opportunity to get such a good honor for the, your animal. We're here at the Bubblegum Blowing Contest, which is an annual favorite and staple at the Iowa State Fair. Let's see how big these bubbles get today. When you're measuring yeah. a bubble, yeah. I'm sure it takes precision. Yeah. Talk to me about this. Okay, you, you, you watch the bubble. And then and they'll put their hand up, okay? And then you just kind of get in real close. You don't pop it, just kind of get in close, and then you measure. <laughs> You've got this down. Go, 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 A whole lot of chewing. Uh, I think my game plan is to get it as worked up as possible, chew it as much, and then get a big bubble. What is the biggest bubble you've seen on stage so far? Um, well, mine was a six, so I haven't seen any. I, t I actually tied with someone else, so. <laughs> Do you love chewing bubble gum? Do you have a favorite flavor of bubble gum? This flavor. That flavor, the pink flavor? Okay. Moving up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how good it'll be, but you know, we'll see. What is your favorite flavor? Um, just the straight bubble gum, straight up, yeah. How big do you think your bubble will be today? Hopefully big enough to at least get third, so. How many years have you been practicing blowing the perfect and biggest bubble? Since I was five. <laughs> do you feel confident going into this competition today that you could get a blue ribbon? Yes. <laughs> oh, buddy. Tanya, I see you have a blue ribbon with you today, and, and you wanted to win it for a group of special people to you. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I'm a social service coordinator from Lantern Park Specialty Care in Coralville, Iowa, and I won second place last year, and I was very proud, and so everyone was, everyone was rooting for me today so I could bring back this, this blue ribbon. <laughs> I just won my first place in the bubble gum blowing contest of 2024 Iowa State Fair. Did you win a ribbon at the fair this year? Congratulations! Here are some of the lucky and talented winners. We're going to take a quick break, but don't go away. We've got more fair highlights for you, like these. The sheer excitement and unmatched elegance of the Society Horse Show. Meeting some modern day farming heroes. And the dazzling brilliance of the Illuminator. We'll see you right back here for more State Fair fun on Iowa PBS. If you could go to the fair with anybody, who would it be and why? I would go with my mom because she would ride every ride at the fair. I would definitely bring Taylor Swift here because it is the corn dog era this year at the Iowa State Fair and we'd love to have her come. So I think she will if we mention it. <laughs> I think I would go with LeBron James. Dude just came off a gold medal run. He's a really popular, I enjoy crowds. So I think it'd be a great time to hang out with him too. If you could go to the fair with anybody, who would it be and why? Well, it would have been with my husband, who has passed on now a couple of years ago. But we were married for almost 73 years, and I came to my first fair with him here. If you could go to the fair with anybody, who would it be and why? I would go with my wife, of course. It would be my grandpa Dale. He died a year ago, so we could sit in the beer tent and drink a cold beer. I would probably bring somebody up from the state fair that has never been here before. Usually we love bringing the kids up. We bring them up to get, let them eat some of the food, try some a sample of everything, but the younger the better. They just have a ball every year. 4-H provides Iowa youth with hands-on learning experiences in so many areas. Science, health, agriculture, and civic engagement, to name just a few. Brooke Kohlsdorf is in the Exhibits Building to find out more. So here 
at the Iowa State Fair, while many people think of all of our amazing exhibits from all across the state that 4-Hers have been learning and doing all year long, we work really hard to have a hands-on showcase every day so that anyone coming to the State Fair can learn and do something with 4-H and learn from our members. We want young people to experiment and explore passion areas, find their spark that really gets them excited, and then learn more. One of the reasons we are so excited that this is a living showcase, not just our static exhibits, but our communication events throughout the 11 days of the State Fair, it gives our 4-H members lifelong practice with their communication skills. Whether it's 4-H members perfecting their communication skills or youth development specialists introducing a new field of study, children have lots of fun finding hands-on learning at the 4-H Exhibits Building. What is this called? Um, uh, I don't know. It looks like a bug bridge to me. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, how long has it taken you to build it? Um, a really long time. Is it fun? Yes. You put uh, like some colors of paint you want, and then hex bugs like go around and like mix it up, and then just one, once you want it like what it looks like, then you, they'll just dry it out, and then you get to keep it. So you put like water and Orbeez in one of these little jars and then you add like a scent to them. On the and then the females, and sometimes they're cool, but the females do not have it. I call them like the polka dots. Go ahead and make the line all the way down the road. Good job. Have you ever seen pollinator habitat on the roads? Have you ever looked at and saw flowers? That's what we really like. We want them actually doing something and so they can actually see it and then go home and apply it. And so when, we, uh, when they come through there, they have a handout. We want them to take that home, share that with somebody, so that they can extend their learning past here. I know that we're probably gonna have over 400 kids come through here today, but we also have two or three parents and grandparents coming through. We're actually using this as a teaching moment for both youth and adults. You know, those of us who know and love 4-H, know and love 4-H. This year the Iowa State Fair came up with this idea to make these farmer trading cards and so my wife and I we bring up the sheep and the cat, or part of the cattle for the Animal Learning Center and so they have asked have us give some information and a picture and they made a trading card about us and so I am here today handing them out and signing them for different people and that. Would you like one signed sir? <laughs> So far, there's probably been 70 or so that have came and asked for a card, I'd say. Mostly little kids. I love seeing the baby animals and seeing the people, some of the same old people, and meet new ones too. Well, they're asking what we raise and, and what I like about the farm. On the back here, it tells, you know, what I've said, the joy of farming is producing food for people around the world while caring for the land and our environment. And the rewards of farming for me is watching our children grow up on our farm and seeing the miracle of animals being born and growing up. Here at the bullpen, we have our farmer trading cards with the Miller family on it. 
and we're here to talk turkey with fairgoers. Um, it was organized by the Iowa State Fair, and it's not just going to be turkey producers here coming into the bullpen. It's going to be all commodities throughout the entirety of the state fair. Yeah, so my background, I was an FFA usher for two years, and then last year I was a state officer. So this is my fourth year that I'll be spending every single day on the grounds. This is my internship passion project. I got to completely design all the signage on the barn, and now it's here. The display is meant to educate everybody that comes here into the Animal Learning Center. So the hope is that they can take a little bit of turkey knowledge home. A common thing that we heard in the past is a lot of people think the turkeys are actually ostriches. And so we were just trying to push as much turkey knowledge out of them as possible in a pretty friendly way. In this area, I would say most of these people, it's, they've not been around animals before and that are very much. Because I don't believe everybody in the cities know where animals come from and their food then. And, that, and how we are treating them humanely. It feels great. I am just about to go into my sophomore year at Iowa State University, so it feels good to know that I have such a big project under my belt. Love the state fair of my whole heart. Of course, I love the fair food. I love the educational displays. I love everything about ag education, and I'm going to continue trying to spread everything I know with fairgoers. The most we want people to know about the Society Horse Show at the Iowa State Fair is that it's an opportunity to see the American Saddle Red Horses and other horses of the Society breed, the Hackney Ponies, the Arabians, the Morgans, the different breeds that belong to this group of what we call fancy horses, and we're very proud of them. I'm brushing Andy with a soft brush, which kind of gets the dust off better, and I just want him to look shiny and sleek. My sister's showing him tonight, and I showed him yesterday. Well, I think my children inspired me to ride. Both of them rode, but my daughter, Adrian continues to show, continues to be successful. She was the winner of the equitation class here at the Iowa State Fair four times. And so there's a trophy that I give in honor of her every year. It's a perpetual trophy. When the kids were through with college, it was my turn, and I took up both of my kids' sports, so I run and I also ride, and I started that in my late 50s, and it's just been a real pleasure. I started showing as a kid here at the Iowa State Fair, and then we opened up a public training barn in 2021, and we've been coming the last four years. I love the show horses. They come out with a show attitude, Ears are up, big eyes, tails up, excited. They're athletes and they love to perform. Our society show's got about 50 exhibitors and we usually have around 100 horses in here. They take up roughly 125 stalls and that includes all of their tack that they need for their horses. And while they do come from, I would say, far and wide, the majority of our exhibitors are local to Iowa and even more local to really the greater Des Moines metro. The Arabian Half Arabian Native Costume Class, the riders come in, they are all in Native costume, but you would think that the costumes would be the main thing that we're judging on, and it's not. The costumes are really only about 25% of what the judging is. The 75% is the performance and the manners of the horse. Saddle seat equitation stake, the stake class means that they've already shown in a qualifier class. So this is like their championship class. And what's nice about the equitation is that almost all the other classes are judged on the horse's performance. The equitation class is judged on the rider, the rider's form and position, how the rider navigates around the arena. Being an open class, some of the other roadster classes, manners are paramount. In this one, it's performance and quality, so it's more judged on the pony itself. 
And it's kind of fun because with the Roadster ponies, they always kind of remind me a little bit of the race cars of the pony world because they are shown at speed. You'll actually see it across all the breeds and all the exhibitors is that it's a family event. And that's really great for the Iowa State Fair that it's brought families for generations. And we have several exhibitors who do come multiple years, I mean decades really. We've got several that have been here 30 plus years. The Iowa State Fair Society Horse Show is really important because this is a grassroots show. And this is where I think a lot of times where people can first kind of experience horses and maybe somewhere along the line if you bring your kids to the fair your child might say wow mom dad this is something that I would really want to do I really would love to learn how to ride a horse how to drive a pony and that will be just as excited about the horses and the ponies as we are so that we can go and pass this on for generations to come. The competition only intensifies as the week goes on at the Riley stage. Here are some acts marching on. Don't forget, we'll bring you the Talent Championships here on Iowa PBS Sunday, August 18th at 8 p.m. It is going to be quite a show. Up next, we'll meet Randy Mills, who shares the art and trade of blacksmithing at Pioneer Hall. I'm originally from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. When I was about 14, I went to the Upper Peninsula State Fair and I saw a blacksmith and a master bladesmith right next to each other. And I was so enthralled that I had to learn how to do it. We are burning bituminous coal. As it burns, it will cook off any impurities and turn into coke. It's very porous. The coke burns a heck of a lot cleaner than coal does. A lot of people wonder why a blacksmith will tap off to the side. That's so they can keep rhythm with their hammer blows. This sound right here, this is my, my drum, my music. When I have another smith standing right next to me, we're hammering in time. The anvils are ringing in different notes. It's like, oh my god, it's so beautiful. That, that's my, oh, oh God, I, lo I love this moment. As we're hammering, keeping that rhythm, our steel will stay hotter longer. We're actually compressing the molecules, creating friction. Anybody have any questions I can answer while I'm waiting for my metal to get hot? A lot of them ask how hot the metal can get. I can get this steel anywhere from 98.6 or whatever room temperature is, up to 4,000 degrees, which is molten. So by running the colors, I can tell you how hot it is. It's a nice bright orange. So I'm somewhere around 2,000 degrees right there. Smoking hot. So blacksmith, what color are my arms? Black. What color is my metal? Black. That's how we got our name. What color is my coal? Black. Blacksmith. So what a blacksmith does is we heat our metal and we hammer it into shape. And open up that wedge. Open up. Here we go. And it's starting to open up. Point is done. Come on, get on there. Everything here was done with a hammer, a wrench, and maybe a pair of pliers. You bent that? Yeah, I'm squeezing for all I'm worth. 
And I take the plier and just walk it around, little by little, and it'll bend into shape. I would rather teach you to be self-sufficient and learn a craft than to sell you something that you say, hey, this is my pretty. I think they're doing a real authentic job. They make things that's custom. You only get one. And they have, they take a piece of raw steel and they can twist it and make it into a, all kinds of tools and all kinds of handy things that you can't buy at the store. But if it ever come push to shove, that'd be a handy art to have. Give you one somebody you want in your corner. I teach classes trying to expand the world and their knowledge base so they can pick up this craft and do it on their own as well. It's coming back. This area through the center ended up getting raised up. It used to be down low. You know, each building, even at least the ones that I've been blessed to work on these days, I can always look back on them and say that there's always a story to tell behind it. We're at the sheep barn, and the 4-H exhibitors here are making last-minute preparations to enter the ring. Let's go join them on the tan bar. I am nervous every time I shear, but if you're not nervous, you're not human, right? Kind of like a family tradition to come to the state fair and show sheep. The sheep barn at the Iowa State Fair has been a center of agricultural activity for decades. All of the brick barns at the Iowa State Fair are special. Their grand entrances exude importance. They elevate agriculture, and they demand a place in Iowa's history. And so there's a whole bunch of things that show you that it was, it was built by, by hands, all the brick. You've got to imagine all of the different people over time that laid each and every one of these bricks in every one of these buildings. It's been an ongoing process since the early 90s to keep this facility alive for our users now, users in the future. The livestock barns as a whole are undergoing a major $25 million renovation that started in 2023. The project addresses needs like roofing, flooring, electrical, and restrooms. Some of the polychrome terracotta on the sheep barn's exterior has been taken down for repairs. It is a unique piece of ornament to not only have terracotta on, on your building. A lot of times you see those things downtown, but to see it on a fairgrounds and to see it in a barn certainly makes it worth preserving. Restoration work takes time and delays in scheduling means that the terracotta isn't quite finished, but the inside is ready for fairgoers to enjoy. Well, this year when the fairgoers arrive, the people that are showing arrive, hopefully uh, they'll be able to walk into this space and see or get a sense that maybe time has been turned back. If you look closely, you'll always see these kind of imperfections, maybe a line that isn't quite straight or something that makes you wonder what, what they were thinking. And I'm amazed by how few of drawings it took to actually build some of these things to the degree of, of ornament and precision that they have. But something as simple as, as restoring the flagpoles that used to be on all the corners of this building became something that was important. Even though they were gone, we knew that they were once there. And I think people appreciate when they go on the grounds just to be able to see those flags flying on the corners of their building. You can't really build history it's, it's something that's already been there. And so it's a matter of trying to figure out how to, how to maintain it and appreciate the rough edges with the clean edges and those sorts of things. This year, there's a bright new act strolling down the main concourse that is sure to catch your eye. The Illuminator is making its debut at the Iowa State Fair 
and has quickly become a crowd favorite. Catching the attention of onlookers with a suit made from thousands of vibrant and reflective glass pieces. Uh, seven foot tall, all glass. I didn't think it was glass, I thought it was plastic or steel or uh, aluminum. Very reflective and uh, you can't see his eyes, you can't see his lips, his mouth, so uh, whoever designed it. And I come from California, so I've been around Hollywood. That was a Hollywood production, that was cool. That was really cool. It looks like a pink or a lavender. To me, it's, it looks different each time I look, I mean, because like I swore in the evening it looked more lavender. Today it looks more pink. So I don't know what color, fuchsia maybe? I don't know. He kind of looks like he's broken and he got fixed, so. <laughs> he just kind of looks like he built himself. He looks happy. Uh, he's pink, like a rose gold, and it's like broken pieces of glass. And he's got a top hat on and cane, a mirror man made of glass. I think he's Mirror Man. I don't know what it, I mean, I just love how reflective he is, so I call him Mirror Man. And you see him coming because you see people like turning and looking, and then he always acknowledges us, which is fun. And so we kind of play back and forth, a little banter. The Tin Man? <laughs> That's what I would call it. He just was so happy to pose and uh, take a photo and yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of Tim Man, of Wizard of Oz type thing. <laughs> he's like photogenic, I kind of like it, you know? Like he's ready for that picture. He hits it with new poses every time. He opens up a path like this for I could get through and then he did a little dance, it was really cute. I thought he was quite a gentleman. I just thought he was, or he or she, or whoever it was, was flashy, sexy, and just awesome, cool. If it was 110 degrees, I lived in Palm Springs, so bare naked at 110 degrees, you would die. Him in that glass was incredible, so I, I think that's cool. The Illuminator is a brilliant and dazzling display that you simply can't miss. Something different at the fair. Every year I try to capture something different. So that's something different, so yeah. This event is the old fashioned hymn sing, and this event has gone on, I can't even tell you for how many years. It happens every day of the fair at 11.30 and 6.30. If you were standing outside, it sounds like a church choir in here, because the people that come love to sing. The tradition has been standing room only with people standing at the windows so they can participate as well, singing in. Uh, the song leaders I've worked with like to ask for audience participation. 44. 44. 24. And sometimes we can't keep up fast enough with the numbers of hymns that they want to sing. secular ones are the patriotic songs. Uh, America the Beautiful seems to be a favorite. Battle Hymn, which we ended with, is especially a favorite. And then uh, My Country, Tis of Thee. Uh, otherwise, it's all uh, religious songs. I love it. 
if they love to sing, if they love being shoulder to shoulder with other people who love to sing, they ought to come in. And it's a great way to carve out just 30 minutes of worship time during a fabulous state fair. And that wraps up another evening of FAIR 2024. We know a lot of you have a lot of choices on television, so we're honored that you spent your Friday night with us. If you want to experience any of our state fair highlights again, log on to our website, our YouTube channel, or the PBS app. You can find our full shows there. Give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram for loads of state fair fun. There are a variety of ways that you can engage with us about our beloved State Fair anytime and anywhere. We'll be back again tomorrow with a very special night of coverage, which includes some traditional Saturday night favorites, like the husband calling contest, Daddy! the cookout contest, and of course, the 4-H and FFA Sale of Champions. So don't miss it, the best state fair coverage around, right here on Iowa PBS. Until tomorrow, in for Bill Riley, I'm Paul Yeager. Have fun at the fair. Funding for FAIR 2024 is provided by... QuickStar is proud to be a part of Iowa communities across the state. Family owned for over 50 years, we're dedicated to treating our guests, employees, and communities as we would like to be treated. Across Iowa, hundreds of neighborhood banks strive to serve their communities, provide jobs, and help local businesses. Iowa banks are proud to back the life you build. Learn more at iowabankers.com. For Iowa pig farmers, caring for animals is more than a job. It's a way of life and a proud family tradition. Meet the people behind the pork and hear how we care about Iowa too. Learn more at iowapork.org slash we care. Iowa State University Extension and Outreach, providing educational resources online and in your county for you, your family, community, business, or farm.